Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Billington and this is The Campfire. Today we're talking 6-5-8 Division 2 where Dallas ISD claims all of the spots. After realignment, this district consists of Adamson, Conrad, Hillcrest, Thomas Jefferson, Kemble, Samuel, Segaville, South Oak Cliff, Spruce, and Woodrow Wilson. South Oak Cliff is still riding high from their first ever state title last year. Will they ride the momentum to back-to-back -to -back championships? Or will another Dallas ISD team up in them? Let's start off things by analyzing these teams in our film session. Where else can we start than in South Oak Cliff, where Jason Todd's Golden Bears are coming off a magical 2021 season that saw them bring DISD their first state championship since 1958. And Sock is loaded again this year as they try to make it to back-to-back -to -back titles. Randy Reese, the district offensive MVP, is back along with a star-studded defense that would make some Division I colleges jealous. Woodrow Wilson moves down to Division II and they hope to give the Golden Bears a run for their money behind quarterback Cam McGuire and receiver Keldrick Smith. Hillcrest returns a slew of talented two-way players like Reggie Williams and Brady Gibson, who should lead the Panthers to the postseason. Kimball went 6-2 and two in district play, but they have lots to replace in 2022. Other teams to watch out for in this district are Siegelville and Spruce, who both finished respectable last year and bring back some solid experience. Conrad will hope to get one of the four playoff spots behind running back Chris Leggard. Meanwhile, Samuel Adamson and Thomas Jefferson will battle it out for some district wins. If you think 10 teams is a lot for a district, well, Dallas ISD officials agree. So they broke the district down into zones. To explain what that means and to dig even deeper into 6 5 8 Division II, let's bring in our Inside High School Sports Insider, Matt Dix, along with producer Ward for Sold for our district breakdown. All right, district breakdown time. Dixie's with me again. We're talking 6 5 8 Division II, the DISD district. Ten teams in this district, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're playing every single team, as we found out. But what do you think about this district, and, and what do you, how do you th feel they're going to play this thing out? Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about the zones, because, you know, this is a very unique concept, and, and this is sock-driven. And, and when you are the state champions, uh, the, the, the champ is here, as it were. I, I guess you get a little, you get a little uh, play at the negotiation table. Uh, so what they decided to do, according to our buddy Matt Stepp, who broke this information uh, right after realignment, uh, was they broke it into two zones. You got zone A and zone B. In zone A, you're going to have South Oak Cliff, you're going to have Kimball, Spruce, Adamson, and Samuel. And then in zone B, you're going to have Woodrow, Wilson, Hillcrest, Segoville, Conrad, Thomas, Jefferson. They're going to play all, they're all going to play each other, and we're going to get seeding within the zones from one to five. Then week 10, and, and this is where it's a little bit different, because we're going to have two weeks of uh, zone playoffs. You're going to have one versus two on both sides. So the first place team in zone A is going to play the second place team in zone B uh, and, and vice versa. And then you're going to get the winners play each other, uh, one versus one, two versus two after that. And for SOC, because we've talked about this with Lancaster and some other teams, uh, you really have to have some sort of competitive balance to kind of get ready for non-district. Uh, so SOC kind of gets the best of both worlds. They get to have a killer non-district of four games. Then their last two games of district are going to be against the best team in the zone. Uh, so I think that they're going to be as good as they can be, as, as prepared as they can be uh, coming out of this for, for the playoffs. And I think by all... I think by all accounts, South Oak Cliff is going to be considered the number one team in the state as we're starting 5A. All right, Dixie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Dixie and Wiz will have even more about zone play in this district on our social media platforms this Wednesday. So don't forget to check back on Wednesday. Now let's take a look at some of the athletes you should keep an eye on in this district and our players arise. One of the top defensive backs in the nation is South Oak Cliff's Malik Muhammad. As a junior, Malik picked off three passes and ran one back for a touchdown. Meanwhile, he tallied 68 tackles on the year as Muhammad simply just locked them down. 
He's also very versatile in the secondary as he can play three different positions on the defensive backfield. Muhammad's top six schools are Alabama, Florida, Texas, Michigan, Miami, and Texas A&M. If one four-star cornerback in your secondary is good, two has to be better, right? Well, that's what the Golden Bears have as Javon Thomas joining Muhammad in the secondary as well. Thomas snagged an interception to go along with 30 tackles last year as most sock opponents simply gave up on passing against them. Javon has big-time athletic tools as he has an explosive burst and a 34-inch vertical jump. Thomas verbally committed to Texas A&M. One of the better two-way players in this district is Brady Gibson of Hillcrest. Though he was second team all district as a tight end last year, he really does damage on the defensive side of the ball as a linebacker. Gibson rung up 116 tackles last year to go along with seven sacks, a pick, and three forced fumbles. He should be a menace on the field again this year. On offense, one of the better returning quarterbacks this year is Cam McGuire of Woodrow Wilson. He was a newcomer of the year last year as a sophomore as he threw for nearly 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns and completed 60% of his passes. The Wildcats will be looking for McGuire's continued development in 2022. One of those teams who will be chasing the Golden Bears for that district title is the Hillcrest Panthers. Our Ward Fasold caught up with their head coach, Jacob Ramon, to talk about his team and how they might navigate this district in our Media Day segment. All right, it is Media Day, and we are joined with Hillcrest head coach, Jacob Ramon. Coach, let's talk about the district. Not a lot has, well, a little bit has changed, but at least you're going to see a lot of district foes this year all district folks from Dallas ISD, uh, 10 team district. Well, the, you know, we've, we've played, we've played uh, three of those teams uh, pretty close the last couple of years. Well, with the exception of TJ, uh, Woodrow Wilson, if I had to pick from the outside looking in, Woodrow Wilson, they have a lot of football players. They have a lot of great tradition. Uh, Coach Benedetto, the last couple of years has done a great job there. Um, and Coach Fish, I mean, we have some history with Coach Fish. He beat the brakes out of me in, in 2018. Uh, he scored 50 points. He's a hell of, heck of a coach. And uh, he's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. We're going to have an opportunity to go watch them. And I know they're going to be ready. There. So they're probably going to be favored. I would favor them. And I think we're we're probably right behind them, uh, real close to Siegelville. So Woodrow in our zone, it would be Woodrow Wilson, then, then us in Siegelville and then finish with, with Conrad and TJ down there. Uh, so it's it's going to be tough to, to win that zone. It's going to be very challenging. As an ISD, did that, with what happened with SOC last year and, and how much the whole community, you know, galvanized around them once they won that state title, does that bring any kind – can you use some of that kind of motivation like, hey, it's been done, we can do this. Down the road they did it, we can do it too. Let's, let's not just think about our 10 games on the schedule. Let's think about what we can do – maybe pull off a playoff win or two? You know, anything's possible with God. And, and what Coach Todd and, and, and his football team, the Sock Bowden Bears did, was amazing. I mean, that this whole city was lit up. I mean, it was a, it was just a party to see that and to, to, to just cheer them on as part of our, you know, big brother kind of. And, uh, yes, we use that. And, and we, we also use it on the other side. I mean, uh, these kids, our kids here at Hillcrest, no, we're not going to face anybody better. No matter how far we go, we're not going to face anybody better than we did against Sock and Alito. You guys have already faced the best of the best. I'm excited to see how this thing turns out, and I appreciate you joining us today. Mr. Fessel, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. You have an amazing day. We will post the entire interview on our social media platforms this Friday. But if you just can't wait and you have to hear it now, you can go over to our podcast and iTunes and Spotify and listen to the whole thing. That's it for this week's show. I am personally hoping for a DISD team to make the long run like Sock did last year. The atmosphere was electric in the city. Join us next week when we move to the last of our 5A districts when we analyze 7 5A Division 2. You can keep up with everything on the high school football scene on our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram accounts. Until next time, I am Ashley Bullington, and thank you so much for watching the Empire.